What's happening, dogs? Mr. Allen here with some SAT math prep, focused on using your graphing calculator to answer some of these problems that you may not know how to answer otherwise or just want to move a little quicker through. I got four different examples for you guys, so let's start with the first one here. I've got what is the minimum value of the given function? Now, in another video, I will show how to do this using an equation, your x equals the opposite of b over 2a, but let's say you didn't remember how to get your axis of symmetry and then plug back in to get your minimum value. You could just graph it. So I'm gonna hit y equals, and I'm going to plug that in. Clear out whatever you got in there. I got x squared minus 48x plus 2,304. Now, unfortunately, if I were to go to zoom six, zoom standard, I'm not gonna see anything. And they often give you these types of problems knowing that you might try to graph it and you might not know how to adjust things, okay? So it takes a little bit of skill here, but here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna suggest, we're gonna open up our window here and I'm gonna adjust these to like, let's say negative 100 and positive 100. Now, if I graph this, I'm still not gonna see what I need, okay? I'm gonna show you guys that. Uh, thanks, but no thanks. But, but check this out. If I instead hit zoom zero, which is zoom fit, what my calculator is gonna do is it's gonna, between the negative 100 and positive 100 for your x values, it's gonna automatically adjust the y values. And I know this is a positive quadratic, it's gonna have like a U shape, and I'm looking for that lowest point. So let's hit zero here, zoom zero, and look at that. It adjusts it for me. And now what I can do is I can hit second calc, and I'm gonna go for minimum here, and I'm on the left-hand side, it does say left bound, so I hit enter for that. Then I'm gonna to go to the right-hand side. You can either arrow like that, or I can just type like 50, hit enter, and boom, it jumps over to the other side. So I would just pick a value that you know is over that minimum value. Could have picked 80, 90. Remember, it goes all the way to 100 over there because I set my X minimum and maximum to negative 100 and positive 100. And now we're gonna guess, so I just hit enter a third time, and boom, there we go. We got 23.9, so 24, and then we have 1,728. Now it's asking, so let's write down this ordered pair here. It says 24, comma, and then we have 1,728, 1,728. Uh, what is it asking for here? What's the minimum value? The minimum value is my Y value, so that's the answer you're gonna wanna type in there and move on to the next problem because you just crushed it and you got it right, awesome. All right, next problem. All right, this next one is a bit of a doozy here and you're gonna be so happy that you learn about this app that we got going on in this one. So it says, for each real number R, which of the following points lies on the graph of the equation in the XY plane for the given system? Okay. Honestly, if I saw this one when I was in high school, I probably would have skipped it. I would not know how to do it. It's honest, it's really tricky to do just by hand anyways. But if you guys hit apps right now and you arrow all the way down to number nine or just hit the number nine, hit enter and go to simultaneous equation solver. Okay, let me show you guys how to get that again. It's apps, arrow down to number nine or type the number nine hit enter, polynomial root finder, very, very useful, okay? If you don't remember to fa how to factor or you got a higher you know, order polynomial, um, we'll do that in another time or I'll link a video or something like that. Uh, simultaneous equation solver, that means system of equations, two equations, three equations, whatever. It should default to, to two equations and two unknowns. So we're all set there and you see those little, um, those boxes on the screen, they're controlled by the gray button. So to go to next, I'm gonna hit the graph button. And I am just gonna type this system in. So I got seven, enter. It's plus, so enter again. Six, enter. And then we have five, enter. And then for the next one, I got 28, enter. Enter again, 24, enter, and then 20. Okay, now if you were to do this with elimination, you multiplied everything by uh, like a negative four, everything would cancel out, right? So they're actually the same equation. And uh, so that's where the algebra becomes kind of tricky and this guy helps. Do you guys notice how it still says zero in that box? It's because you gotta hit enter again. Now the 20 comes in. So don't forget to hit enter like I almost did on that last one, okay? So now to solve this, I'm gonna hit graph and up pops this expression, interesting. So now you have to actually interpret this. So you see how it says y equals y? That's essentially the r in this particular problem. So the only choice with that is choice D where the Y is just R and look at our X coordinate. The first part, the algebraic expression in terms of R says negative six over seven R, negative six R over seven, which is what we have for X here, negative six over seven Y. Remember I said Y is R here. And then it has uh, plus five sevenths and it's positive five sevenths. So this guy's just flipped around five sevenths minus six over seven Y but that's our answer. Our choice is D here. This guy did all the heavy lifting for us. Just type it all in, boom, 
done. And if there's another problem that's just like normal and you solve for either X or Y or A or B, you can still use the simultaneous equation app to solve the system for you if you don't feel like doing the algebra or you don't remember how to do elimination method or whatever. But this guy here, very tricky to do. And honestly, I probably wouldn't want to do it without this app. Um, so there we go. Hope we got, that helps there. Uh, and we got, uh, we got uno mas problem here. One more problem. So we have in the xy plane, when the graph of the function f, where y equals f of x, they always say that y equals f of x, it's just the function, okay? Uh, it is shifted up six units. The resulting graph is defined by the function g. If the graph of y equals g of x goes or uh, crosses through the point four comma b, where b is a constant, what is the value of b? Hmm. So this, all this is saying here is if I plug four in to g of x, What's my y value? That's literally all it's asking. And if I'm shifting it up six units, I'm just adding six to the end of my function. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna clear out of my graph from the last problem. And I'm gonna type in four minus one, uh, four plus three, I'm plugging four in for x. And then we have four minus two. And then we said we're shifting up six units, hit enter, 48, that's it. That is literally, all you have to do on that problem there. The wording is a little bit confusing, but it's asking us for what's the, the constant B when X is four and the original guy was shifted up six. That's it, guys. 48 is your answer. Move on. Type it in. Move on. You're crushing this thing. You got two in a row. So we have the table above shows the distribution of ages of the 20 students enrolled in a college class. Which of the following gives the correct order of the mean median and mode of the ages. And this is a frequency table here. So it's the age, 18, there's six people. 19, there's five people or five students, whatever, okay? So the total is 20 students. Now, to do this problem, you could go through and do it by hand. You'd have to do like 18 plus 18, six times, plus the 19 times five, and then divide everything by 20. That's just for the mean. Then you gotta kind of figure out the median. And the mode's pretty easy, the mode's 18, right? But the mean and the median take a little bit of work here. There's an easier way, check this out. I'm gonna hit stat. Actually, we gotta quit out of this old app here. Second quit, second quit to get back to the home screen. Now I'm gonna hit stat, okay? And I'm gonna edit. And if you have some stuff in this list, you just arrow up, hit clear, and then enter. And I'm gonna type in that first column. So I got 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 30. Okay, random jump there. An arrow to the next one. That's where our frequency is gonna go. So six. Enter five, enter four, enter two, enter one, enter one, enter one, enter, boom. Okay, we got it all in there. Now what? We're gonna hit stat again, go to calc, and you have one variable statistics. That's the one that we want for this. That'll get you your mean, median, mode, all sorts of stuff, quartiles, all that good stuff. Hit enter on that. Our list one is good, that's our list, but our frequency list, that's L2. So hit second two, and now it'll put the six, five, four, two, one, one, one. Those are gonna be your frequencies. Now hit enter, hit enter on calculate and check it out. We have our mean is 20, X bar is mean. So I'm gonna put mean equals 20. Um, let's see here, our median, we gotta arrow down a little bit. There we go, it's 19 right there. Median, that's 19. And we said our mode, the most, the most is our, uh, is 18, and that one's easy to see from, from the table, right? So it's asking us uh, to put them from least to greatest. So it looks like it's mode, then it's median, then it's mean, so the choice is A. And that's awesome. And I don't know if you guys even knew that that, uh, that little aspect existed here for one variable statistics. I never really used it before I started doing some of these SAT problems, things like that. So hopefully that's helpful because honestly for this one, that's a lot of work to type that all in and takes a lot of time. For some of them, pretty easy to find your average or your your uh, your median um, if they give you a list of numbers and just do that by hand. But for something like this, I think the calculator comes in super duper handy. I can just type it all in, boom, answer it and move on. All right, docs, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you guys have any questions, pop them in the comments, have requests for other videos or styles of problems, pop it in the comments. I got a ton of other stuff um, that's on the SAT as a part of a playlist, so be sure to watch those. Or if you are planning to take the ACT as well, got a playlist for that. So check those out, guys, because they are two different tests, all right? Thanks again for watching. Stay awesome, and good luck on the SAT.